Slieav na Calia. Loch Crew, County Meath. A place of ancient stones. A place of ancient stories. It is said that the stone monuments here were dropped from the sky by a giant woman. A Kalyak, a hag, a veiled goddess. Her prodigious work has left us significant remnants from a hoary, distant age of the past. These are remnants of that age called by archaeologists the Neolithic, the New Stone Age. It certainly was a new age for the humans who lived here more than five millennia ago. For the first time, men and women began to leave monumental memorials to their brief time here. Some of their monuments, such as this Cairn V, present a pitiful and confused picture. Did this chamber ever have a roof? What would its builders think if they saw it now? We should be glad that there's anything left at all. Cairn U is similarly roofless, stripped of several of its vital stones at some point in the recent past. But its chamber, thankfully, survives. A great deal of its smaller cairn stones are missing, probably removed to build the field boundary walls that cross the hill today. Miraculously, some of its megalithic art survives too. Carved carefully here more than 50 centuries ago. The best efforts of the harsh Irish climate have not yet managed to smoothen these symbols to the point of erasure. But one gets the sense that Cairn U needs a roof or at the very least an umbrella, or before too long, this wonderful art gallery from the remote human past may fade into memory. Looking out along its narrow passage, we are directed towards the place where the sun rises at Samhain and Imbolc, the beginning of winter and the beginning of spring. The larger perimeter of Cairn S presents a broken ring of irregular curb stones. They're like lichen-encrusted molars and incisors, some smooth and some jagged. Here and there are gaps, entrances perhaps, into a sacred interior. In the interior is another roofless space, its stones like a mouthful of crooked teeth. I climb inside the tiny chamber and hunkered down, taking in a view that was first beheld by ancient eyes in a far distant age that would have faded completely from view if it hadn't been for these great monuments. With much of its cairn stones removed, Cairness looks a bit sad and forlorn. But as with all these things, we celebrate the fact that anything has survived at all.
At last, we approach the greatest of the cairns at Slivnakalia, one from which stones were not plundered. It is today known as Cairn T, but for a long time it was called the Kalyak's Cairn. As we step towards its modern gate, flanked by two giant curbstones, we are approaching an ancient mystery. Humans like us put these huge stones here. Humans like us engraved them with circles and spirals and other patterns. What we cannot know with any certainty is why they did it. Today, Cairn T is locked, preventing visitors from entering its sacred interior. I zoom in to get a glimpse of its tabernacle, its sacred stone. The Equinox Stone, as it has become known, is beautifully illuminated twice a year by the rays of the rising sun on the equinoxes. I walk around the curb of Cairn T towards the north to view the most remarkable of all Irish passage tomb curb stones. This is the hag's chair, the stone upon which she sat having completed her great cairn building exertions. The poet in me likes to imagine that she is still sitting there, smiling contentedly with her work, peering out towards the northern region of the sky to the undying stars which circle and wheel endlessly over this remarkable landscape. And I bow low and curtsy to her before taking leave of this, her most magnificent creation.